Hi guys and welcome to the channel. My name is Johnny and I am your Hillbilly Modeler. And this is part two of our M113 Armored Personnel Carrier by Tamiya in 135th scale. And in this video, what we're going to be doing is uh, picking up the interior as well as our engine and transmission and transfer case and all those parts that goes into our engine bay. Uh, and getting that all ready so we can close this model up. Um, now, Reminder that the, the, the top of this model is still removable, so when we get done with it, if we wish to display it with the, uh, uh, the top armor plate off, right, we can still be able to see into the uh, crew compartment. So I guess the best thing for us to do is go ahead and get to it, because we've got a whole lot to do in this video. So there are a few things that I think we need to go ahead and do before, uh, before we actually start spraying some paint. And the first part is going to be, I think we should uh, kind of assemble uh, these uh, sections here that divide up the uh, engine bay uh, from the uh, fighting compartment. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to dry fit and uh, set the uh, floor plate into place. And now we can go ahead and insert these panels. Now they are keyed, so we can't really get them wrong. Uh, but we just want to make sure that we got a good matchup uh, right there at the seam for the corner of it there. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to use a little bit of Tamiya Extra Thin here. I'm just going to apply it at the top of the joint. And then we're just going to press and make sure everything's seated properly. I don't really want this glue to roll all the way down, you know, or I wick down, I should say. <laughs> uh, and glue it to the floorboard uh, of the vehicle. And then also the uh, uh, front panel right there that's in front of our driver. Uh, we're going to go ahead and set that into place. And we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to take a little bit of Tamiya Extra Thin. And just, just enough to get it to set. Now, once that dries for us, uh, and it doesn't have to be completely dry. We just want it nice and solid. Uh, we'll be able to remove this. And then we'll go ahead and add a little bit more glue here uh, to make sure everything is uh, uh, nice and solid for us. So with that little bit of assembly out of the way, uh, we can start preparing everything to be sprayed. Uh, so I do use a strip of cardboard here uh, with a uh, looped piece of uh, masking tape. That's just painter's masking tape. Uh, and it's the low tack type, the purple stuff. Um, and that sticky side out. Now that keeps me from <laughs> blowing the parts around inside the uh, spray booth too bad. And uh, also, uh, wherever I can, I like to use these alligator clips because that really makes uh, the painting so much easier. And uh, right there, uh, I actually had the uh, uh, a little bitty piece of sprue left on my fire extinguisher. And give me a little bit of something to uh, clamp on to. Now since Tamiya has molded these parts, uh, the interior parts are in a gray plastic and then the, uh, the hull of the vehicle is in a dark green, uh, I think it's a good idea to kind of unify all that. So we're going to use this uh, Vallejo uh, black primer. Uh, and it's an acrylic water-based paint. And we're going to cover all those parts. That'll give us a really nice uh, even base to... Uh, uh, paint our primary color on. Now, Tamiya calls out for our uh, lenses on our periscopes to be black, and uh, a lot of you guys probably uh, may paint them a different color, a dark blue or something like that, but I'm going to stick with the black. So, since I've already got this primed up in black, uh, I think the best approach is to cut these little pieces of uh, mask tape here, and we'll just place those over top of the uh, periscope lenses. Now I also went ahead uh, when I primed this, I primed the uh, uh, the upper surface uh, around the driver's hatch where the periscopes protrude up and uh, we're going to also take and uh, mask those off as well. Now in the past, I have gone back and after <laughs> after painting the vehicle and tried to actually paint the periscopes in, 
and uh, that didn't work out too good for me. So I'm hoping this approach is going to be a lot better. It's easier to touch this up than, uh, than try to paint these in uh, after we've got the color of the vehicle on. So for our interior color, I've chosen pale gray, which is just a uh, slightly dirtier white. Uh, to me, it calls for white, and these Vietnam era vehicles were uh, actually white on the inside, but I felt that that was going to be a little bit too bright. So we're going to use pale gray for this, and uh, we're just going to spray that onto all of our interior parts uh, except for the transmission as you can see I did mask off the transmission uh, the transmission and engine are still gonna be black uh, until we get our uh, color for those on uh, but all of our interior parts the seats uh, the fuel tank battery box and all that we're just gonna spray everything up with the pale gray and we want to make sure that uh, we get a good even coat of the pale gray on there. Uh, this is where the black primer really comes in. It'll kind of show you uh, if uh, the paint's a little thin in some spots. And since we do have some of these sub assemblies already well put together, uh, there may be some little areas that are really really tight to get into uh, with our pale gray. And having a good uh, black uh, primer base coat kind of adds like a little false shadow there for us and <laughs> for some reason I always find after I think I'm done um, some little spot that I probably could have used a little bit more paint on so uh, that black base coat primer really really can help us out in those areas especially when it comes to corners and and things like that kind of one of those false shadow areas so now we need to go ahead and prepare everything for painting our uh, drivetrain components. Uh, first thing is to remove the uh, masking tape from our transmission. And once that's done, we can go ahead and kind of mask off around our transmission because we're going to be painting that up uh, in a different color. And we definitely don't want any overspray into the interior uh, of... Um, our crew compartment uh, or <laughs> anything else that we really don't want uh, those colors on. Now for our transmission we're going to use this uh, craft paint uh, the metallic silver and then uh, just a couple of drops of metallic black in that and then for the engine I'll be using the um, metallic charcoal gray for that. Give it a little bit darker color. Now once our transmission's painted up we can go ahead and remove uh, all of our little protection here and our masking tape around the uh, floor area there of the transmission that we put on to protect it from overspray. And here we can see the results from spraying the engine that uh, uh, metallic charcoal gray uh, now we're not going to worry about the glossy sheen <laughs> that these metallic colors have because we are going to uh, uh, put a dull coat on all this uh, uh, but you can see the color uh, differential we have not really differential different colors that we actually have between our transmission and engine so next up we need to do a little bit of detail painting here and so this is Model Masters Rust Acrylic, and it is a water-based paint. And we're going to use that to paint our exhaust manifolds. Now in some cases, uh, some of you may like to paint these parts before assembly. A lot of times if I can, I like to go ahead and put them on. And it's just easier to hold <laughs> when you're painting them. Uh, now to me, it does call out for this... Uh, uh, they call it the carburetor, but uh, that's not what it is. It's the actual intake boot for the carburetor. Uh, we're going to paint it Vallejo acrylic flat black, but uh, the instructions calls for it to be painted chrome. And I don't know if it should be chrome or not, but uh, I'm going to paint mine black. 
Another thing that we have here that we're going to paint, we'll be using the same uh, pale gray that we sprayed the interior with, is the bracket here that holds a uh, hydraulic reservoir. And it goes across uh, from the engine to the transmission. And uh, we're just going to paint that the same hull color. Uh, which in a lot of cases, uh, they were painted the same. Uh, the same as uh, the engine bay color. So now we're going to do a little bit of dry brushing uh, with my favorite dry brushing color, which is uh, Tester's Flat Steel. And we're going to use that uh, on our pulleys and uh, around the edges on our uh, uh, hydraulic reservoir. Um, and this is just to pick out those edges of the pulleys. We're also going to use it on our generator and the generator pulley. Now while we got our flat steel enamel testers paint out and we're doing some dry brushing, I think it's probably a good time to go ahead and uh, put in some wear effects here on this uh, basket weave deck plating that we have in the crew compartment and it's just a a really light uh you, you really don't want <laughs> to to get too much on there uh this all the high spots here on these uh basket weave plates uh would be the, uh, the paint would be all rubbed off on them it'd be nice and shiny for us so we're going to go ahead and uh put in that little bit of weathering So next we're going to paint our fire extinguisher and I'm using Model Masters uh, acrylic red for that and we'll also come in with a little bit of silver and paint the handle and also the bracket straps for our fire extinguisher add a little bit of different color in there for us. Now I'm going to use this testers flat rubber here uh, to paint the uh, uh, fan belts and right here, this is the fan belt for the generator, which is mounted uh, off the accessory drive on our transfer case. And we will paint that the uh, flat rubber. And we'll also use this flat rubber to paint the fan belt on the front of the engine, uh, where our uh, uh, pale gray bracket <laughs> and the... Uh, all the accessory drives and stuff on the front of the engine arm. Now we can actually do a little bit of assembly. Uh, I'm going to use that medium uh, CA glue here and we're just going to put a little bit of that CA glue on a uh, piece of cardboard and use a toothpick uh, to put a little bit of that glue on the contact area so that we can go ahead and attach the engine so it goes on right beside the transmission and it is keyed the engine is to the floor plate so you don't have to worry about getting it uh, uh, <laughs> in there backwards also uh, we're just going to put a little bit of CA glue on the attachment points there for our transfer case now the transfer case is keyed we have a circular um, pin, <laughs> if I can think of it, a pin on one side and a half moon on the other so we don't get that upside down. And then we can move to the front uh, of our engine and transmission and put that little piece in there we did all that detail painting on. And so that's the end of the transmission, as well as the pulleys and fan belts and everything for our engine. And that's looking pretty good. I always like this assembly phase. And we're going to continue on. We, we have a coolant pipe uh, that needs to go on as well. And we painted that coolant pipe up in the pale gray. And it just goes right into place. It has a small pin uh, that comes off of the engine intake manifold so you can't get that piece backwards. I just want to make sure that it's seated really good before that CA glue takes hold. 
And then it's time for our generator drive belt and generator and just a little bit of CA glue there. And it does have a half moon uh, locator as well so that it goes in just in the right spot. You just want to make sure that that all gets pressed in uh, right where it's supposed to go. And that looks pretty good. So I, I really enjoy it when it's time to start putting stuff, stuff together. So to continue the assembly, uh, we need to tie in our exhaust manifolds. And so we do have an exhaust pipe for that. And we just put a little bit of CA glue on that one as well. And making sure that uh, we get this lined up correctly because to me it does not give us uh, any locator tabs or anything. They're just flat uh, connection joints. So we want to make sure that those are straight. And then we'll continue on with the uh, attachment of our steering differential. So I have the little drive shaft that goes in between the transmission and transfer just slid into the steering differential uh, going to the transmission there. And we'll just put a little bit of, to me, extra thin on there so that <laughs> that doesn't kind of flop around. It is uh, just a little bit loose there. And that should be more than enough to hold that into place for us. Now we got some more detail painting to do. So what we're going to do here is we're going to paint the knob that's on our transmission shifter. And we're just going to use the Vallejo acrylic black for that. And then we also have a uh, handle down below that. And we're just going to use the same Vallejo black for that. Most of the handles that are inside uh, the crew compartment uh, are black rubber. Here we're doing the laterals. That is the driver's steering control. And they are black as well. So we'll just paint those grips up on it. And that's the Vallejo black that we're going to use there. Now continuing on with the uh, interior of the vehicle here. This is the uh, ramp release handle and that's inside the driver's compartment there. And we're going to paint the handle on that, uh, the black. And now we can turn our attention to our uh, seat cushions. So the seat cushions in this vehicle are also black. So we're just going to go ahead and continue on and paint the seat backs as well as the uh, seat cushions uh, with this acrylic black and we'll we'll come in and weather it here after all this dries so quick note now there are three seats to do there is the jump seat that's behind the tank commander uh, and then this is the uh, driver's seat that we're doing right here and there's also uh, the tank commander's seat as well. So we'll paint all those up. Now for the driver's seat, however, uh, there is a square uh, rubber pad that sits right on top of the uh, post that the seat mounts to. And so that gets painted uh, black just like the, uh, uh, the seats get painted too. Now we're going to work on our instrument cluster. Now this is XF62, which is all of drab, and this is a Tamiya. Uh, and we're going to come in with this all of drab and paint the uh, headlight controls. The, this control in every vehicle that I've ever been in in the military are always the same color and they're always all of drab. So we're going to go ahead and paint uh, this, uh, the Tamiya uh, all of drab XF62. And next we have all of our uh, gauges that's on the instrument panel for our driver. Now what I'm using here is the thin mixture uh, that we used in our uh, airbrush uh, for painting the faces of all of our gauges. And that's going to kind of help us 
to get it to flow around all the details that are inside these gauges because to me it did put quite a bit of detail there which we'll try to bring out with some dry brushing uh, once uh, this flat black uh, dries for us. And for that dry brushing, we're going to be using the uh, flat steel, which is kind of my go-to, <laughs> if you haven't noticed. Uh, but it really helps bring out the details. And so we need to unload as much of that paint as possible off of our brush. And then we're just going to lightly go over uh, the gauges. And also the um, uh, light control, which we painted uh, uh, the olive drab to kind of emphasize the buttons now that especially when it comes to the uh, light control switches those get used quite a bit so a lot of that paint would have been worn off on on the little levers that, that are on that now to me it has molded in a lot of those uh, details into the gauges so that dry brushing will help bring those details out so we have a lot of dummy lights um, on, on, on our instrument uh, panel here and we're just going to use a little bit of that red that we used before on our fire extinguisher and a toothpick and we're just going to touch it uh, right to those lights. That would be like low uh, oil pressure warning and, and temperature lights and gosh I can't remember everything that's on there but uh, yeah we're, they're all supposed to be red though. Now it's time to put a little bit of wear on the edges of our seats and I'm just going to use this Tester's Flat Tan for that. And we're still going to be using the same dry brush method where you put a little paint on your brush, unload almost all of it, and then we can come in and just very carefully uh, kind of brush over those edges just to kind of emphasize uh, the wear that you would see uh, on our seat cushions here and that will simulate um, the fact that this vehicle is actually being used so once we get all that done uh, we're going to seal everything with the X22 gloss clear by Tamiya and that will give us a really good gloss surface to do some panel lining uh, so this is uh, Tamiya's uh, black panel liner that I'm using right now. And I am using a long bristle pointed brush to apply that. I don't really like the uh, applicator brush that Tamiya puts in the bottle for us because it's not very controlled. With a small thin brush like this, uh, we can target uh, whatever areas that we want to um, put this panel liner on without... Uh, having a tremendous amount of cleanup and we're going to go over our instrument cluster too and and pretty much everything on this vehicle anywhere there's an edge uh, or some sort of an accessory or linkage or anything like that to kind of help bring those details out and that's the great thing about panel liner it helps you do that now when it comes to cleanup uh, on our panel liner uh, since we have that gloss coat on there um, this enamel product, the, the panel liner, cleans off really easy with just a little bit of enamel thinner. And so if we have any little spots, as you can see there, uh, we can clean that right up. All right, so we're going to take a look here at step eight, because this is where the decals, or decals if you prefer, uh, <laughs> that need to actually be put on uh, inside the driver's compartment and also on the back access panel for uh, getting to the engine and transfer case. So these are water slide uh, decals. And the first thing that I always do is I cut them off of the sheet. We wanna separate the ones that we're gonna actually be putting onto the model from all the others because we're not ready for those yet. And uh, we're just gonna cut those out first. And since they are water slide type uh, decals, I suspend them in a little bitty container here of water. And I use my self-gripping tweezers to do that. 
<laughs> that way I can go ahead and do a couple of other things in the, while, while I'm waiting for it to uh, uh, loosen up. Here we're going to use Microset, which helps with the adhesion of these decals to the surface of the model. And with a clean brush, we're just going to put that micro set right where that decal is going to go. Uh, and since you, you can see here how it beads up on that clear um, Tamiya X, or, yeah, X22. And uh, I'm just checking my decal right now to make sure that it is loose from the paper. And then we can just slide it right on off uh, onto the surface. So we have a little bit of time here where we can make adjustments if we need to. But it always helps to get it right the first time. <laughs> and then uh, with a cotton swab or earbud or Q-tip, whatever you prefer, uh, we are just going to roll it down and squeeze all that liquid out from underneath it. And then there are occasions when things just don't line up exactly like you want them to, uh, which is usually just about every decal I put on. And when that happens, uh, you need to go ahead and pull that decal off. If it doesn't want to move around on the surface, just pull it off and replace it. Don't wait because you can't really fix that later on, especially if, it, if it's dry. If it's dry, you're kind of in trouble there. So you want to kind of get that done as quickly as you can. And of course, we, we're going to squeeze all the liquid off of that. So here we're going to use a little bit of micro saw, which actually softens the decal because on this one decal on the top there, it kind of overhangs uh, a little bit and it needs to conform to the shape of that panel and so I'm just going to apply it right where I need it and giving it just a little bit of time to soften the decal we're going to press it down using a q-tip or earbud just to make sure that it is down nice and flat on the surface and I really have to admit that these decals really look good. They really do. They, they really bring out all that extra detail and everything that the driver's compartment and the back panel have. And the clarity on these decals are, well, they're really excellent. So now we're going to move on using this X27, which is the clear uh, red uh, from Tamiya. And we're going to be using that to paint in the night light uh, on our dome lights. There are two dome lights on the roof section. And I'm just using a toothpick to apply that into that little light recess. So the square one is for the red light. And the round one is uh, white light. So we're just going to paint in the square ones. And you may need to add a little bit of extra x27 depending upon how how red you want this to be now previously i had gone in and painted the uh, base color underneath this uh, silver as you can see there now we can go ahead and seal in all of our hard work here with the model masters acryl flat clear acrylic and uh, that'll protect all of our work now we can go back to our instructions and start attaching all these parts that we've painted up. Uh, now we've already got the engine and transmission and, and steering differential installed. So we got the troop seats to put in. And also we need to go ahead and put in our laterals and our driver's seat as well. So we're going to start off with our troop seats. And we just need a little bit of that CA glue. And I like using the CA glue over painted surfaces because I know that it's, it's actually going to stick. And we'll just go ahead and locate those very carefully. So there are these uh, 
not really slots, but there's sections where uh, the support legs go into, and then we just set it up along the back uh, support section there. And the important thing here is to make sure that we don't glue our fingers to it in the process. And as you can probably see here, that I, I did do the dry brushing on these seat cushions, just like we did on our driver and commander seats. So when you paint all these items up, of course, sometimes you've got to really press some of your parts in. And that's true here with the, uh, uh, the control laterals here uh, for our driver. You need to make sure that those, those are fully seated. And we can go ahead and glue in the seat post for our driver. Just making sure that we work that down into the slot where it goes. Now we can put in uh, all these little accessories here. The fire extinguisher, the uh, fuel tank, and what have you. We're going to leave off the exterior stuff for now. And we can put in our battery box as well. And then we can install that uh, separator there between the engine compartment and the crew compartment and our heater. So we're going to start with our instrument cluster and just put a little bit of CA glue on that and then also the locator portion there um, down on our sponson and just press that into place. And we'll do the same thing for our fire extinguisher, making sure that it uh, seats down fully and has full engagement there. So I think painting all these parts up separately. Now you could go in and install all of this and then, and then paint it later. Especially considering that they're all the same color, but um, it can create some sort of a problem for us here to get into all them tight corners so painting these items up separately uh, gives us that flexibility and and it's much easier to use our panel liner uh, to bring out those little edges and details and it's just easier to assemble it uh, later on now if you're building uh, another kit that has a whole lot of uh, interior parts. <laughs> uh, I think painting them up separately is probably the best way to go. Now here we're just going to install the personnel heater and making sure that it is seated correctly. And then we come in and just put a little bit more of that CA glue uh, right on those contact points just to make sure that it's going to be uh, securely held into place and then we can put it in as well now the one thing that I need to watch out for here is to make sure that I do not glue my fingers to the bottom side of the floor section <laughs> uh, because these holes and slots go all the way through but you do want to make sure that you get this fully seated uh, that way it will fit into the hull of the vehicle. And there we go. So it really goes together pretty quick at this point. Now we do only have four attachment points on the bottom of the floor section. Uh, so I am going to put my uh, CA glue there. And I'm going to put it on kind of thick to make sure that we've got plenty there. So now it's time to insert the uh, floor section, which we have built up into the bathtub style hull here. And it does help to kind of spread this just a little bit and it'll drop right down into place. So we want to make sure that we're all the way uh, situated back towards the rear. There's no space uh, where that rear ramp goes. And we're just going to hold it just a few seconds here to make sure that, that CA glue takes hold. And now we can attach the rest of the uh, seats and platforms. There's this little platform right here where the uh, uh, commander goes. And we want to make sure that that 
is nice and square because you can get that a little bit skewed and now we can go ahead and put in the, the jump seat and it just fits into a little square slot we just want to make sure that it is straight and now we can drop in the TC seat as well So yeah, this goes together pretty quick uh, once everything's painted up <laughs> uh, and ready to go. So that looks good. So here we're going to scrape off any overspray that we had on our final drives. So I did spray the final drives the same color as that we got in the engine bay and pretty much the crew compartment too. That way we've got a, uh, a good contact surface area uh, for... Uh, these final drives to adhere to the plastic and I'm using just uh, rubbing alcohol here to make sure that there's no overspray where those final drives are going to go in because that, that rubbing alcohol will take all of that paint off if there's any in uh, that's going to interfere with that contact and as you can see those uh, final drive set on the end of the shafts there of our uh, uh, steering differential. Yeah, I almost forgot what it was called. And then we're just going to use some to me extra thin to glue those into place. So now we're going to go in and remove that mask tape that we put in over our periscopes. We don't need that anymore. Uh, in this location, now we're going to leave uh, the uh, mask tape on the exterior but on the inside uh, we don't need those now at this point we do want to check to make sure uh, that the armor top here of our armored personnel carrier uh, fits correctly and we don't have any issues that we didn't identify before and as you can see there, that, that post where our uh, TC goes his, and his seat's attached to, it kind of clips over uh, on a little tab there to hold that into place. But it does fit nice and tight. And uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. So it's a nice fit and we don't have any issues here. Which is always good. It's always good not to have any issues. All right, so that's going to wrap up part two of our M113 Armored Personnel Carrier uh, build. Uh, we got a whole lot done in this video, and as you can see here, we have all those decals. That, I am just amazed at that. I, I'm really glad that uh, Tamiya put all those uh, decals, or decals if you prefer, uh, <laughs> into that kit because that really helps. And uh, uh, we got a whole lot done on this kit, and for... Uh, Everybody that's new to the channel, uh, if you're not a subscriber, then I hope maybe today that I earned your subscription. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss the next video in the series. And for all of my current subscribers, thank you so much. I really appreciate your support. If it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be making these videos. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed this one. So until we get to part three, uh, which will be on Friday... Uh, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. And you guys stay safe. And I will see you in the next one.